Hey guys, what is up? It's Vanessa and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another week's worth of dinners that my blended family and I shared throughout the week. So the first meal that I'm going to share with you guys was kind of an appetizer night and one of the dishes that I've served is actually featured in my Fall Food Friday, a collab with Fallon over at Moss Family TV and it was my dragon dip or aka buffalo chicken dip. So we did have that tonight. If you want to see how I made that, I will link it here so you guys can go and check it out. It's a really quick four minute video and so worth it. It's probably the best thing I've made in a very, very long time. So what I am showing you guys right Right now is I am making a nacho dip which I'm sure you've all had at every potluck or every party or you've made yourselves but we wanted it and it's not something we always make at home it's always to take to go somewhere but sometimes it's nice to spoil yourself so all I do is take cream cheese and sour cream and mash it all together now all I did with this cream cheese was pop it in the microwave be very careful if you're gonna try and soften your cream cheese in the microwave you could burn it and it can really mess with the texture but I usually do it in about 15 second increments just to soften it up now when I make this dip I like to go ahead on the sour cream but you guys do you if you prefer cream cheese over that then do more cream cheese and I literally just mix the two together and add some taco seasoning and then I just smooth it out on the bottom and then you're gonna put a layer of salsa whatever your favorite salsa is and sprinkle on your favorite cheese I like to sit it in the fridge for a few minutes just to kind of set up a little bit but you can dig in right away <laughs> So I figured since we're having wings and dips tonight and buffalo chicken, it would be a good idea to serve it up with some veggies and ranch on the side. And I also have a baguette that I grabbed and I'm gonna go ahead and slice it up just half of it. And if you wanted to toast it, that would probably be really good too. I'm also gonna throw some wings that we bought into the oven, just some uh, pre-cooked wings that I got from our local grocery store. We really, really like them. <laughs> Here it is, the wings are all ready. I served it up with some hot sauce on the side or some sweet and sour, plum sauce, whatever anybody wanted to eat them with. There's the dip, you guys. Make sure you check out my Fall Food Friday video for the recipe for that one. It's so, so good. My veggies, I've got our Tostitos and our bread already, and we have our nacho dip, and this was such a fun supper. <laughs> Okay, on this next night, I made loaded potato soup with homemade cornbread. Now, I have ranted about this in previous grocery hauls that I cannot find a cornbread mix anywhere. So you guys, I just said I'm gonna make my own. I will link the recipe below. It is a YouTuber here that I found the recipe. I will link their site and the recipe. So all I'm doing basically is combining all of my dry ingredients, which I already had pre-measured out. Then I'm going to combine all of my wet, mix them together and pour them into my nine by nine well-greased pan and I'm gonna bake it and I'm not gonna lie, this was amazing. You need to try this if you've never made homemade cornbread. So it's not loaded potato soup without bacon. So grab a big Dutch oven and cut up some bacon and get it frying. Mm -hmm. 
If you guys are new to my channel, then you don't know that I am horrible at following a recipe. Well, no, I can follow a recipe, I just choose not to. So this loaded potato soup is basically all of my favorite things combined and all of my favorite recipes. I don't have anything to link for you guys, so hopefully watching me do this and the things that I tell you will be sufficient to help you make it at home. I am adding all of my favorite things. I'm adding celery and onion that I will saute in the bacon fat. I'm adding these tiny little potatoes that I don't have to peel because I'm so tired of peeling potatoes, you guys. And it's a loaded potato soup, so it kind of makes it feel a little more authentic. All right, like I said, I am using all of that bacon fat and I added about an extra two tablespoons of butter. I'm going to add my celery and onions and let them saute for about three or four minutes just till they get slightly translucent. Now I'm also going to add in a little bit of salt and pepper. There aren't that many seasonings in my soup, you guys. I'm gonna add about a quarter cup of flour to get my roux going. This is basically gonna be what you need to thicken your soup. You wanna cook this off for a good minute to a minute and a half because you you want to get rid of that flour taste. Next thing I'm going to throw all the potatoes in there. I'm doing it in this order so I don't splash any liquid up on myself and then I'm going to add in all of my liquids which works out to be about three cups of chicken stock and two cups of milk. You could use cream if you'd like. We are a lactose free mostly house except for cheese so we went ahead with just lactose free milk. So what you just saw me add was some seasoned salt. This is a recipe from Crouton Cracker Jack. He's the recipe that I use for chicken pot pie. I will link it below. I also added some garlic salt, some dried chives. You could use fresh if you had it. I'm gonna add onion powder, garlic powder, salt and pepper. Now I'm gonna let that simmer for about 20 minutes till your potatoes are cooked maybe a little less depending on how uh, small you cut your potatoes. And I'm gonna add in anywhere from half a cup to a cup of cheddar cheese. It's totally up to you how much cheese you wanna put in. It's also gonna help thicken your soup, but it's what's gonna make it a loaded potato. Hence the chives, now the bacon and the cheese. So all together, let that simmer. And guys, you can eat the soup within half an hour from start to finish. I think it's one of my favorites and that's why. My cornbread turned out amazing, just the right moistness and just the right amount of like that crumbly cornbread texture that I really like. So here you go. I'm going to serve it up with some of the bacon crumbles from Kirkland. You can always use a little extra bacon and a little extra cheese. And of course, my green onions. You guys, it has been almost 13 days. These onions are as fresh as the day I cut them. Here's a recipe I have shared with you guys before. I believe I made it when I was on vacation at my mom's in Halifax, Nova Scotia in her crock pot, but today we are making it in my slow cooker in my Ninja Foodie. So basically I've heard it called poor man stew as well. It's a bunch of root vegetables, whatever you like. We like rutabaga. Apparently I'm calling it turnip and I've been wrong and I've been corrected in the comments. I will try to do better, you guys. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and throw an onion, carrots, potatoes, turnip. You saw I have those little potatoes again. They're perfect because you throw them in whole. I'm gonna use tomato sauce, canned tomatoes, oregano, garlic salt, basil, a bay leaf. I'm also gonna use some beef broth and a brown gravy mix. And here I'm just showing you, this is the slow cooker lid. You can buy these on Amazon if you do have a foodie and you don't wanna use your pressure cooker lid to use as a slow cooker. I don't like to do that because I feel like it's getting my pressure cooker lid extra dirty. So here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and brown up my beef. I like to season it in the pan with salt and pepper and oregano and all of those things right away. If I had had tomato paste, you guys, this is when I would add it. I would cook it in with my ground beef. I didn't have any. If you have some, I would suggest adding 
even just a quarter of a cup would help. Now I'm gonna go ahead and slice up my vegetables. Yes, I am in my house coat because this is a slow cooker meal and you put it in first thing in the morning so you don't have to think about it the rest of the day. Now when you're cutting up all these vegetables, you kinda of wanna consider their cooking time. Turnip and carrots take longer than potatoes. So I tend to cut them just so that they're all relative in size so they cook at least at the same time. It doesn't actually turn into mush, contrary to popular belief. You know, they say everything is always mush when you cook it in a slow cooker. I can honestly say the Ninja Foodi, the slow cooker function is pretty phenomenal on this. It does not annihilate all of my food. So here I am throwing everything in. Now for potatoes, I kind of eyeball, I usually say roughly uh, three to five per person, depending on how many we are and who's here. I'm gonna dump all of the ground beef, grease and all, right into this pot. And I mixed up per the directions, my ground bra uh, <laughs> brown gravy mix and my beef broth. That's what I'm using for liquid. I'm also gonna empty that whole can of San Marzano tomatoes from Costco. And I'm gonna add a little more liquid in there to get some of the sauce out and just to add a little more liquid. You just want it to be barely covered, if nothing, not even completely covered because you don't want it to be soup. It is supposed to be a stew. Now at this point, I'm gonna season a little more. I'm gonna add some more oregano and some garlic salt and some dried parsley. And I'm gonna give it a good stir. If you wanted to add fresh garlic, you could do that. But when it comes to this hamburger stew, you guys, I really like to keep it super, super basic. All right, so like you just read there, I ended up cooking it on the high setting, not the low setting, because I didn't find my carrots going quite as quick as I'd like to, and I switched that up about an hour and a half in. So I did cook it total on high for about seven hours, and I'm telling you guys, it's so, so good. I have a Crock-Pot brand slow cooker, and this would be mush by the end of it. I am absolutely in love with my Ninja Foodie. So I am realizing the more and more that I do these what's for dinners that my family eats pasta at least once a week, once a week. Please tell me down below that I am not alone. I am just adding some Italian seasonings to some ground beef. I'm also gonna add some chili peppers. I just like to add a couple, not enough to make it super spicy, but just an extra little hint of flavor. I add about a teaspoon of minced garlic. I'm just using the Costco or the Kirkland brand. I just find it easiest, especially on nights when you're just trying to get dinner on the table. So this is basically my version of a homemade meat sauce, the Classico Sweet Basil Marinara, which you guys know is my favorite pasta sauce. And then if I'm using tomato sauce, it is always the Hunt's brand. You wouldn't even need to add any seasonings to these if you didn't want to, but I'm gonna add a little bit more Italian seasoning just you know, because it makes me feel like I actually cooked it and made it homemade. I have a whole bunch of cheeses out here for anybody who wants them, some Parmesan. I have the shredded Parmesan I got at Costco. I toasted up some of the garlic bread. That's the big bags that I get at Costco, you guys. Sometimes I add cheese, but I wasn't feeling it this night. Everything is laid out. The sauce is ready to go. These are the meals I love. Yes, I love homemade sauce, but I know that this will be done in 20 minutes and everybody can be eating and everyone's gonna have a full belly. And there you have it guys, that was another week of meals that my family and I shared that I am sharing with you. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and leave a comment down below. You guys know that I love to interact with you in the comments and I cannot wait to see all of you in my next video. Take care. Bye.